you have a quiz tomorrow. Yes. A partner quiz. What? You're going to live through it, I promise. Yes. You will do it great. Okay. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to do your notes front and back. One of them's with the calculator, the other two are without. The difference is going to be that we're going to do them all the way instead of just setting up because on your quiz tomorrow, there are several you have to do all the way. So, uh, look at number one. Uh, we're going to be in the first quadrant bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and that line. So, let's graph it. Where would we start? Um, For the line. Six. Six? Six. And then what's your slope? Okay, negative 2x. So this is y equals 6, and then I'm going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay, next thing I need to find is my x-intercept. Remember, to find an x-intercept, you're going to let y be 0. So if I let y be a 0 here, equal to my 6 minus 2x, where's that going to cross? Uh, Okay, so I take my 2x over, equal to 6, then divide, and it's going to be a 3. Very good. So that's that number there. So now we know where they cross. Let's shade our region. And then we're going to find the area of R. Now, one of the kids in my fourth was like, well, it's a triangle. Can I just know? You're right. You could have done that. Okay, but I want you to do it. The whole point is to practice integrating. So if I was going to set up an integral, where would I integrate from? What x is? Okay, 0 to 3. Yes. And then top minus bottom, what's the function on top? That one. 6 minus 2x, and what's on bottom? 0. zero. So it would be 6 minus 2x minus 0. So remember, you're integrating between your x's, those are your bo borders, and then top minus bottom. Okay, now the 0 obviously is irrelevant, but we're writing it to show top minus bottom. What's the antiderivative of 6? Six? 6x. Six What's the antiderivative of minus 2x? Squared. Squared. Squared, yeah. yeah. And then what would I do from there? Plug in, okay. yep, 3 and 0, and then subtract. So capital F of 3, that would be 6 times 3 is? 18 minus 9, so 9. Okay, 9 on top. What about when I plug in 0 on bottom? Zero. 9 minus 0 is? Okay, and that would be the area of that exact shape. Now, if you did one half base times height of the triangle, you would have gotten the same thing. But it won't be like that tomorrow, now that I know. Okay, next one. We want cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, and we want them to be squares. So, draw in a line that is perpendicular to the x-axis. How's it going to go? This way. Vertical, which means it's going to be top minus bottom. Very good. So there's my little sample. That's one of my cuts. Top minus bottom would be 6x minus, oops, 6 minus 2x minus 0. Because remember, it's still top minus bottom. Okay? Then from there, if I want a square, how do you find the area of a square? Base squared. Base squared. How do I make it volume if I have area? integrate it. So it would be volume equals the integral. Where to where? 0 to 3. And then it would be, yep. Okay, now remember, tomorrow you don't have a calculator. So how do we integrate that? Uh, first you double it. Like okay, you that. could do that, but let's u sub it instead. So what would I choose as my u? 6 minus 2x. Okay, I'm going to write it way over here. 6 minus 2x. What's my du then? Negative 2 dx. DU over negative 2. Good. So dx is du divided by negative 2. Okay, from there we're going to rewrite our integral. So I'm coming back to right here. Still going to have the integral, but this time it's going to be u squared. So all of this in here is now my u. And then my dx is now a du over negative 2. So I'm going to put a negative 1 half in the front. What else do I need to remember to change? Endpoints. Very good. So remember, you're going to plug your endpoints in here. So if I plug in 3, what would I get? 6, 0. 6 minus 6 is 0 on top. 
Okay, then I'm plugging in zero on the bottom. What's six minus two times zero? Six. Okay, six. Uh -oh. What is the antiderivative of u squared? Two, uh, two, oh. So u to the three. And then if I divide by three, that's the same as a one third. So I'd have a negative one half times a one third. Now I'm going to put that one third outside of my brackets because I don't want to have to deal with fractions until the end. Then I'd plug in zero, then I'd plug in six. What is capital F of zero if I do zero cubed? What about six cubed? Don't know? Six cubed. No. It's going to work itself out. It'd be 216. But it's okay. Pretend. If you don't know, don't waste time. 6 cubed is fine. Okay, then what do I do from there? So if it's 0 minus 6 cubed, how does it come out? Negative. Negative. Now, why is that good? We have another negative in the front. Those have to cross each other out because volume would not come out negative. Well, now you know. Uh, I just... Okay. Let me finish it, and then I'll address that question. So it'd be negative 6 cubed, which if you want to know, it's 216. So then those negatives cross out, boom, boom, and it'd be 216 over 6. Now, could you leave it as a 6 of 6 cubed? Yes, you could. Okay, now, what she was saying, I heard you say, uh-oh, and I tried to get through the problem without you freaking out, which you did. Good job. Okay, uh, you notice this is backwards? Yeah, that's okay. It works itself out. Now, could you have said, oh, these are backwards. I'm going to switch it, cancel the negative. Yeah. Sure. Okay, but you don't have to. It works itself out if you just leave it in that order. Now, my recommendation would be don't start flipping stuff around. I would just, unless it's a graph, I wouldn't even worry about that. Okay? All right, uh, letter C. Using the same region, we're going to create a new solid where the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis. What does that change? Yeah, instead of dx, what's it going to be? dy. And remember, there are several things that have to change for you to do it dy. The first one is that your endpoints are going to be y values. Endpoints will be y values. Your equations need to be in x equals form. And then remember that your base is going to be right to left. So right minus left. So before we were doing a dx, now we're going to switch and do it dy. So I'm going to totally redraw my picture. You may not have to do this, um, but I think it makes it a little easier than scribbling on the same one. So where did this hit up here? Six. Y equals 6. What's the bottom of the region? Zero. Zero. And then when I draw in my base, it's going to run this way, perpendicular to the y-axis. The other thing I need to remember is this right here, x equals form. I can't do it as a y equals 6 minus 2x, so I'm going to have to convert that into x equals form. So if y equals 6 minus 2x, I'm going to subtract the 6 across. So negative 2x is y minus 6. So far so good? So my 6 subtracted across, and then I'm going to divide by negative 2. So now my x is going to equal uh, y over negative 2 would be negative a half y, and then negative 6 divided by negative 2 would be a plus 3. And that's what I'm going to call that line now. Instead of y equals, we're going to call it x equals. Any questions to there? Okay, how would I do my right minus left now? Base equals what? Uh, yeah, negative a half x, oops, y, plus 3. And then minus what if this is the other side? Minus 0. zero. Obviously, look how beautiful it is. No mistakes hidden. Okay, and then what's our shape? Okay, we remember. What's the formula for that? Okay, give me like the final one so we don't have to find it. Pi eighths. I tried so hard in this class. B squared. I know, that's great. I love it.
Okay, and then where do I integrate from? Zero to six. And do we see why we're switching those? Because they're y values and it's dy. And then you would do negative a half y plus 3 and then squared. Okay, now don't redo a bunch of stuff. Okay, we already did this. Oh, actually, did we do that integral? No, we have not done that. Oh, we didn't. Blast. Okay, what would you pick as your u? The inside. Inside. Do you think you could do it? No. Yes. Should we do it? Yeah, yeah, we should do it. That's fine. We'll do it. Okay, so u is negative a half y. So we do plus 3? Yep, plus 3. What would your du then be? Uh, negative a half. dy. dy. And then when I want to get dy by itself, if it's negative a half, it would be what? Negative 2 dy. A negative 2 on the other side. So dy is negative 2 du. So then I'd come over here to my integral. I'm going to just put my pi 8s in the front. Do you all remember I said you can do that? Okay, so pi 8s is going to go in the front. And then my integral here, I'm going to change in a second. This is now a u squared du. And then I'm going to put my negative 2 here in the front. So if it's negative 2 pi 8s, that could be negative pi over 4. Okay. So negative pi over 4. And then what's the antiderivative of u squared? u cubed with a one-third. Okay, can I use 0 and 6 still? Uh-uh. Got to use these guys here, plugged into here. So if it's negative a half y plus 3, uh, plug in a 6 here, what's a half of 6? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3, so then make it negative is negative 3 plus 3 is 0 for the top. And then on the bottom, I'm plugging in 0. Will that be 0 plus 3 is 3? So if it is just u, then you have to change the endpoints. Yes. Or you could go back to this and plug that in where u is. And if it's y stuff, you can use the original ones. And some people, some teachers like that method better and teach it only that way. So you can do either one, though. I think it's easier to change them. But if you took this that I circled and put that where u is, you would use the original same number. Okay. From there, what is 0 cubed? Zero. What is 3 cubed? 27. Subtract those, what do you get? Negative 27. Negative 27, but then I'm multiplying by this. Positive Very good. So it would be negative pi fourths, 1 third, negative 27. So my negatives are going to cross out. Do we know what uh, 27 divided by 3 is? 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9, so it would be 9 pi fourths. We needed way more room for that one. Yeah. Ooh, and we colored all over our picture. Dang. Oh, you, <laughs> you guys didn't? No. no I didn't because you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll like draw a picture and then I'll notice some of y'all will like draw the picture too. Like I'll put like tomorrow smiley face and then you'll like put it yeah, and then I later on. Yeah, <laughs> you can't control it. Okay, uh, all right, we'll get that next one. Um, so to make this a little easier, here's the plan. We're not going to actually find the intersection. You should be able to, but we're just going to call it A. Okay, that's X equals A. So I want you to set up part A. Find the sum of the areas of R and S. How many pockets are there? Two. How many integrals are you setting up? Two. Two. Okay, so you have to do two separate integrals for the two separate pockets of area. So when I'm doing area, where am I going to integrate my first pocket from? Zero to A. And remember, we're just being lazy. That's why we're not finding it. You could find it. And then for that section, you need to do top minus bottom. Now, if you are not sure, okay, this is F of X. That's f of x. So for my first pocket on this part, who's on top? F of x. F of x. And my set. Oh wait, hold on. I did it backwards. Crap. That's the cubic one or the quartic one. That's g of x. So this bottom one is the e one. My bad. 
Okay, so for your first chunk, I'll ask it again now that I've labeled it correctly. Which function's on top? G minus F. Now, if they did not give you names, could you use Y1 and Y2 instead? Yes. No. That's considered calculator notation. That doesn't count unless you say let Y1 equal and then write the whole equation. Okay, plus second pocket, where are we integrating from? A to which one? Two or four? Two. 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 Ah. Because remember, you're doing it dx. That means you're going between the x values. Okay, and then who's on top for that pocket? F of x. F of x minus g of x. Okay, now I'm going to teach you a fun shortcut. Okay, that some of you will like, but you can always do it this way. Okay, you know how when you subtract things, it only changes the sign? Yeah. So like 5 minus 2 is 3. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, right? How can we make it always positive? You add a negative in the front. Nope. Parentheses. Absolute value bars. Absolute value. So here's a shortcut. You can, if you can do it if you like it better. But if you don't want to break it up, you could integrate from 0 to 2. And you could do f of x minus g of x in bars. Okay, and if you put those bars around it, then it doesn't matter who's on top or who's on bottom because you turned it to have to be positive. Okay, now you can only do that if it's like two pockets with the same two functions. So that was why I didn't teach it when we were kind of learning it. Like if it's only an F and a G. If there was a third function, you can't do all three of them at the same time. Okay, um, all right, part B. Read through it and draw in your cross section. We're going to be perpendicular to the x axis and we're going to do squares. Which region am I using, R or S? S. Okay, S is this one. So I want to draw in my base perpendicular. That would be here. Is it top minus bottom or right minus left? Top minus bottom. Okay, for that chunk in region S, who is on top? The F, of F. F minus G. Because remember, we're on that second pocket, not on the first pocket. Okay, then from there, how do you find the area of a square? Okay, now set up your integral for me. Good, and remember, we're just calling it A because we didn't find it on the AP test. You would obviously have to find that. Okay, and then your base would be F of X minus G of X squared DX. Doing okay? Yeah. All right, turn over to back. A is the intersection. We just never found it. But you would find it. It's like some decimal. Okay. okay, sketch root 2x for me, please. No. Root 2x looks like a normal square root. It's narrower. Uh, yeah, and then what would x equals 8 look like? Good. So I see my region here. We want to find the area. What would you do? Integral where to where? 0 to 8. Okay, this is x equals 0 to x equals 8. And then what would top minus bottom be? What's the top of the region? 0 to 8. Oh, 0 root minus root 2x. Root 2x minus, that would be oh, 0. Okay. Yep. and then dx. Okay, now the minus 0 is irrelevant. Really, this is just 0 to 8 of root 2x. Okay, what method do you need to do that? U sub. U sub. Good. What's your u going to be? 2x. I'm going to do my u stuff up here so I don't take up all my space. So du derivative of 2x is 2dx, which means that dx is du over 2. And then I'm going to rewrite my integral to be in terms of u stuff instead of in terms of x stuff. So it's going to be the integral from u under a square root du with a 1 half in the front. Everybody good today? Yeah. What do I have to change? Good. My upper endpoint was an 8. I'm plugging it into my 2x here. Okay. My lower endpoint was a 0. I'm plugging it into 2x. 
zero. And then how do I integrate square root u? Make it like a half power, good. So instead of keeping it under the square root, I'm going to write in a one half there so that I can do power on it. What's a half plus one? Three over two. Good. U to the three over two. And then what do I have to multiply by if I'm dividing by three over two? two over three. So two thirds already had a one half in the front. What's going to happen there? One third. Yeah, the twos are going to cancel out. So gone. Nope, never, never goes away. You thought. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. Okay, 16, plug it in there. We want it to the third power, and then we want it square rooted. So, uh, four Do the square root first. So, four cubed. Square root of 16 is? Four. Four, four cubed is? 64. 64. <laughs> we were close. <laughs> Okay, then zero to any power is just still zero. Subtract those guys, you get 64. What was in the front? So 64 times a third. And that would be good enough. If it was a multiple choice, they'd probably put 64 thirds. Okay, but any of those are fine. Okay, next one. We want our uh, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. Draw that in. Okay, that's perpendicular to the x-axis. How does it run? Perpendicular to the x-axis. Yeah, top minus bottom. bottom. I guess I should have given you like a choice or something. <laughs> okay, so 2x minus 0. Because the top of it's on the curve and the bottom of it's on 0. Then from there, how do you find the area of a square? Yep. So volume equals the integral from 0 to 8 of b squared, which would be root 2x squared. What's going to happen in there? Good. So really it's just the integral 0 to 8 of 2x, and everybody can do that one. No u sub. Whoa. Antiderivative, what would it be? Uh, x squared. And then what happens to the 2? Bye-bye. Yep. <laughs> Okay, hasta la vista to the 2 because it crosses out. Then plug in an 8. What do we get? 64. What about down here? Zero. Then I do what? 64. 64. So does it make sense that if my area is 64 thirds that my volume would make it bigger? Okay. Yes. Right? Your area would have to get bigger to be volume. Okay? Yes. Okay, now this time we want to be perpendicular to the x-axis. We want semicircles. What's the formula for a semicircle? Pi over 8 base squared. Pi over 8 base squared. What was the base? Uh, we already did it earlier. Root 2x. And then where are we integrating from? Pi 0 to 8. 0 to 8. Okay. And now think about, where could I move that pi over eighths to? The front. So I'm going to rewrite this as pi over eighths integral 0 to 8 of root 2x squared. Does any part of that look familiar? Well, we just did. Yeah, we just did this whole chunk here, so we're not going to redo it. 64 pi over 8. Yeah, that came out to be what? 64. 64. So I'm not going to redo all of that work, but it would just be pi eighths multiplied by... 64. On the AP test, do we have to prove how do we get pi over 8 or can we just write it? Oh. I don't think you'd have to prove it. So I would do it just in case. Uh, yeah, you might do it just. I think you'd be fine though. Because usually they'd give you a point at your integral step. Oh. So I think you'd be fine. Um, Which would be, what's 64 divided by 8? 8 pi. 8 pi, great. Alright, last one. Using the same region, okay, pause, resketch. Okay, so we have our root 2x here. We have our x equals 8 here. This was y equals root 2x. Okay, this is x equals 0. Okay, what is going to have to change if we're going to create a new solid and this time we're going to be perpendicular to the y-axis? Horizontal line. 
Okay, it's going to run horizontal. What do my equations have to be in? X equals. X equals, equals and what do I need for my endpoints? The y values. Very good. So if this is 8, can I, and I've seen several of y'all do this. This is a question that I want you to think about before you answer. Can you set these equal to one another? No. Why not? They're in different forms. If x is 8, what do I do with 8 here? Plug it in for x. You can't put it on the y side because it's not a y. So if I want to know the y value, I'm going to take 8. I'm going to plug it in right there. What is y equals the square root of 2 times 8? 4. Okay, you get a 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So this point here is 8 comma 4. And that's going to come in handy because when I'm integrating, I have to use those y values. Yeah? Okay, the other thing I have to switch is my equation. I can't leave it like that. So solve that for x for me real quick. Don't say it out loud. Do it on your paper. You have y equals root 2x. You're solving that to make it an x equals. So see if you can figure that out. You're going to have to do two steps. What's your first step? Square, Square both sides. That gives you x uh, 2x equals y squared. Then what? So it'd be one half y squared. And that's going to be your new way that you're going to talk about that curve. Okay, then draw in your base. Your base should run perpendicular to the y axis. That's this way. Right minus left. So right minus left. Who's on the right? X equals eight. Eight minus x equals one half y squared. It is going to be 0 to 4 because those are the y values. Um, and then here it said, I want my area to be a rectangle with a height of 3. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. Base times height, but what's my height? 3b. So it would be b times 3 or 3b. No squared because it's just, it's just the 3. It's not 3 times the base. Otherwise, that would have been right. Okay, then from there, I want volume. Okay, as we said over here, we're going to integrate from the y values. So this point is y equals 0. This point is y equals 4. And then I can put the 3 on the inside, or where else could I put it? In the front. And then I'm going to have my base 8 minus a half y squared in there. Okay, all the way through, because this is what your quiz is like tomorrow. What's the antiderivative of 8? 8 what? X. Why might I be wondering y. that that's wrong? 8y. Eight y. Y. Yep. And then y squared would be what? y cubed. y cubed. And then if I divide by 3, I'd have 1 half and 1 third. I'm going to change that to a sixth in a second. But does that make sense why that would be correct? Yes. Ma now, one other question. Can I put this 1 third out in the front? Not if there's more than one term. If it's just one thing, you can pull it out. But if they don't both have a third, think about it like parentheses. You can't just pull out of one of the two. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 in the front, and then it'd be 8y minus a sixth y cubed. Now can you bring it to the front? Nope. Unless they both have it. Think about like a GCF you could pull out. Okay, from there, I'm plugging in 4, then 0. What is capital F at 4? Okay. Yep. 32. And then 4 cubed was 64 thirds, or 64 sixths. And we don't care what that is, right? If you don't know it, put 4 cubed over 6. That's fine, too. Okay, then when I plug in 0, it's just going to be 0. And so then my final answer would be subtract these guys, and then what? Times three. Don't forget that three in the front. So your final answer would have been 32 minus 64 6 multiplied by 3. Okay. All right, we have like 20 minutes left. If you have questions off the homework, I sent out those answers so that hopefully if you're doing something wrong, you can figure it out before your quiz tomorrow. Yeah.
their neck. So, homeworks two, three, and four are due tomorrow. Oh, can I get these back? Can you join it? Sure. You may. And you did your whole other homework fine? something then? I'll do one with you. Ready to help. Two, three, four. Um, if you have not already, homework two, number one, make sure that you know how to do that one. Two, number one. Homework two. Oh wait, not homework. It was homework Because somebody uh, in the other class had like shaded totally the wrong region. So look at your homework three. If you haven't already, um, there is an answer there that looks almost right, but it's for totally the wrong region. So y equals x squared is here. Yeah, I said the wrong one. And then negative x goes like this. Okay, think about, if you haven't already done it, where you should shade. I know where. It says, between the curve and the line, if I stop reading there, I would have shaded here. Not right. From where? Zero to two. So you should have started shading at zero and then stopped shading at two. So make sure if they give you x values, you have to shade on that section. So this would be x equals 0. That would be x equals 2. And so that makes it a sandwich integrating from 0 to 2. And then your top function is the x squared. Your bottom function is the minus x. So it would be like that. But if you, if you don't read that 0 to 2, you might shade that totally wrong little propeller part, and that's not right. Then what's your antiderivative for x squared? Would that be 1 third x cubed. These minuses can both turn to pluses. So now plus x would be 1 half x squared. And then you would plug in 2, and then you would plug in 0. What is 2 cubed for that first part? 8 thirds plus, and then here would be 2 squared is a four, uh, 4, and then cut it in half is 2. Down here I plug in, I get 0, and then remember you need to subtract these. When you take away the 0, that leaves you with just the top part, but then you have to match it to be one of those answers. So remember, the way you get a common denominator is you need to multiply that whole number, the 2, multiply it by 3 over 3 so that they can be the same denominator. So 2 times 3 on top there would give you what? 8 thirds plus, that'd be 6 thirds. And 8 thirds plus 6 thirds would be 14 thirds. Okay. And so like that level of fractions you're going to see tomorrow. 
So just make sure you've done at least enough of them through that you're comfortable with that. All right, y'all just want time to work or you want to do more together? Okay, I'm going to let you work then. And if you have a question, then ask me and I'll do it. Okay. What, Helen? You're looking for. <laughs> don't know where they are. Could she be your most prized possession? We told you at kind of point and be like, give me your backpack. Can I take out my calculus homework first? <laughs> <laughs> Just please let me keep my calculus homework. <laughs> I say two, three, and four. Two, three, four. I right, do tomorrow, yeah. Two, three, four. Oh, yeah. On two, number three. Homework two, question three. Is that correct? Well, it goes with number two. That's why it says convert. Oh, I guess it should say it's that same region from two. So, like, these go together. These two do. So, this shaded region and number two is R. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is R. So, then you would have this is X equals E. This is x equals e to the y, but can I leave it like that if I'm doing it with respect to x? No, not if it's in x equals, right? How would I get y out of the exponent? Ln. You would have to ln here and ln here. And then the ln and the e would cross out. So in, in number 3, you would do y equals ln x. That's what the name of that border is going to be. <laughs> and then you can do it on your graph, but when does ln equal 0? At what whole number? 1. So when you set up your integral for question 3, it's the exact same region, but you're going to set up the integral with respect to x now. So where would I integrate from? Uh, 1 to e. 1 to e. And then top minus bottom, what would be on top? Uh, would be the curve. Yeah, ln x minus 0. And then you'd be done. Do we have to solve it? Uh, no, you should have to set them up. And if you did solve them, though, these two should come out the same because they represent the exact same area. Make sense? How did you get you can't do that one by hand. You'd have to use your calculator. And if you look up here at the top, it says evaluate using your calculator. Because uh, LN doesn't have an antiderivative. So, so math 9. Math 9, 1 to E, and then LN X. And you don't have to put the minus 0, but you could. Okay. And then number 4, have you found the intersections yet? Yeah, no. What'd you get? Seven. Okay, now I did. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yes, I think that is right. And this one, right? Hmm? Isn't it this one? Yeah, so when you set uh, 2 sine y equal to negative 1, that'd be sine y equal to negative 1 half. And so your uh, thing would be pi thirds. Or wait, hold on. Sine if I want a half would be pi six. But then you have to think about on your chart, all students, both of those sine is positive. So we don't want those. You'd have to pick this one and this one. So this would be seven pi six, which you just said. This one though, because it's a negative value, do you see how that y value is below? I would have to go backwards pi six. So this one is going to be y equals negative pi 6, and this one is going to be y equals 7 how pi 6. When, how do you know, like, you will go back? Well, do you see the x-axis here? Yeah. So does it cross in the positive area or the negative area? Yeah. You see how, like, so my 7 pi 6, 
would be up here because it's a positive cross. But then the other intersection on the graph is negative, so we would just tick backwards to here. Instead of the vertical and then go this way. You know that long vertical line, and then instead of like going this way, you have to go from the horizontal. Uh huh. Yep. So then when you integrate that, you'd go from negative pi 6 to 7 pi 6. And then it'd be right minus left, which would be 2 sine y minus negative 1 would really be a plus 1. So like if it's positive, then you would go from, what is that say? You would have to go from, that would be 7 pi 6 to this would be 12. Take away 1 would be 11 pi 6. But think about that y value would be even higher up here. Now, technically, think about it like this. Would this pocket and that pocket have the same area if it's symmetric? So really, if you picked those numbers that you said and you did 7 pi 6 to 11 pi 6, that would have been fine. Because your area would have come out the same either way. But because the graph, you can see they cross at a negative value, you should go backwards. Why do I like the first time I got